Hey guys, it's Glassbox here and in the previous video we looked at how to commit a file but more importantly we discussed the workflow of Git. We discussed that any change you make happens on your local machine and then that change is then added to the staging area and once we're happy with it we then take everything from the staging area and we commit it to the repository. So this video is going to be an extension of that and we're going to look at a couple of more changes. So the first thing we're going to do is just type in git status. So this is telling us that there is currently nothing to change or in other words, it is basically telling us that the current files in this git project happen to be exactly the same as a repository and we're just going to type in ls and we see that there are three different files. Great. So now what I'm going to do is actually go in and start changing stuff in the file. So I'm just going to go into test one and I'm just going to type in some random text. So and I'm going to save it and just close it. If I now type in git status, this is now telling me that there is a file which Git does know about. So this is basically saying that, hey, you know, this file which does exist on the repository and you've changed it, you need to do something to this file. Now, what is the distinction between the two? Let me create a new file. And I'm going to call this file test04, just for now. And I'm going to type in Git status. Notice that there are two different types. Of notification the first is untracked untracked they both mean similar things they both mean that you have files which are different or have changed in this case modified this means that is untracked in other words this file does not exist in the repository however this file changes not stage for commit this file is a file that does exist on the repository and Git does know about it. But the extent it knows about it is that this is a file that does exist, which has been modified. This is a file which has also been modified, but doesn't exist in the repository. So Git actually tells us a lot of information. So in this case, it's basically saying that, hey, this is a file and, you know, you've modified it and, you know, you need to do something about it. So what we're going to do is go ahead and just add that file in. So I'm going to say git add test 01 and just add it in. And then I'm going to say git commit dash m. And I'm going to say changes to test01.txt are done. Okay. So it's saying, okay, great, one file. If I now do a git status again, It's now saying nothing about test file 01 anymore. It was a modified file and it's been pushed. However, test 04 file is still untracked. So if I go ahead and say delete that file, go in here and do git status again, it's now saying great, all the files in your current git project are identical to the files in your git repository. Great. So let's go in and change some more stuff then. So in this case, uh, and hit. Save that file and close it. If I do a git status, it's again telling us that, hey, this file has changed. So something else that we might want to do is actually look at the changes. I mean, so far we've kind of, you know, we know what, what we're doing. We know what the changes are, but maybe we actually want to see the changes. How can we do that? How can you see the change of a file that's in the repository versus the change of a file that's in the local phase of our Git project? In other words, 
this is a file that's locally changed. We know that we've been through that many times. But before I commit that, I actually want to check, you know, the actual changes between this file and the file in the repository. So how can I do that? To do that is quite simple. All you say is git and then diff. Diff stands for difference. And in this case, I'm just going to say test 01 and hit enter. And this is now telling me the difference between this file locally versus repository. So in this case, the stuff in the red is what is currently in the repository. In other words, minus. And the stuff in the green is the stuff that is present local to my environment. So why is it minus and why is this plus? If you think about it slightly differently, if we were to say push this file, what it's actually going to do is overwrite this line with these two lines. Now, this line and this line are both identical. They, you know, they are exactly the same. But Git doesn't really work like that. What Git will do is instead take all the changes from here and overwrite the entire file altogether. Hence why this is a minus and these are both plus pluses. But the important thing we're discussing here is actually looking at the changes between two files. More importantly, in this case, we're looking at the changes between a file local and a file in the repository. So let's just say, you know what, we're absolutely happy with this change. We have absolutely no problem with this. We're going to go ahead and commit it anyway. I'm going to say git add and then git commit. If I now do a git diff on that same file and hit enter, it actually gives us nothing. Why? Why does it not tell us anything? Because it doesn't tell us anything because our current working directory is exactly the same as our repository. And that makes sense, right? Because the stuff in the repository is exactly identical to what we have in our current local drive. So that's great. We now know how to see the difference between a file that's local and a file that's on the repository. But hold on, there's something we, we've missed. What if I did this? What if I got, went back into that same file? Actually, let's try another file. Let's try this one now. What if we add a comment, something like, and save that and let's just do a git status okay great let's just add that file and commit it as well okay so we do a git status great no changes Let's go back to that file and add in another line of text. And let's just type in something simple like and save that and close it. And if we now do a git status, obviously we were expecting to see that as an commit that hasn't been modified yet, or rather a commit that's been modified but hasn't been submitted yet. Let's put that into staging. So let's just say git add, great. So now if we do git status, what do we get? So we get this file that is currently in status. However, what if we do this? What if we now say git diff and we try and look at that file? What do you think is gonna happen? Again, I'll give you a second to think about it. Okay, so if I hit enter, although a lot of you might say, you know, it's, it's obvious, right? It should tell you that, you know, we've added a brand new line. No, that's not what happens. It gives us nothing. Why? Why does it not tell us anything? Because remember, this is in staging. Remember that analogy we used where we said, you know, we put the letter in an envelope and we put it somewhere. Once you've put the letter in the envelope, you, you know, the only way for to see it is to open up the envelope. But otherwise, you know, strictly speaking, you can't really see what, what's inside that letter. The same thing is happening here. We've put the file 
in staging. So as far as Git is concerned, it's something that's kind of ready and packaged to go. You don't need to see the difference for it anymore. But in this case, we do. We do want to see what is the difference between this and what sits in our repository. So how can we do that? Luckily, Git does allow us to actually see the change. And to do it, all you do is you type in git diff dash dash staged and then the name of the file. If I hit enter now, this is now telling us, oh, sorry, you actually meant the staged file. Ah, okay, fine. So this means I want to see the difference between a local file. This means I want to see the difference between a staged file. So in this case, what we're basically saying is, oh, okay, fine. This is what your repository file contains. And this is what your staged file contains. In this case, we are, again, absolutely happy to do it. So we're just going to go ahead and say git commit and just say something like great now let's just do a git log okay we've obviously done a lot of logs now um, and we can see that they're all building up great just in case if you're wondering when we do logs, you can't just kind of get out of a log. To easily get out of a log, all you do is type the Q key, and that just quits out of the log easily. Okay, so what have we covered today? So this video, in reality, is an extension of the previous video. We really haven't covered any kind of new things of Git as such, other than the diff. We've just covered more about committing, more about uh, looking at how the different stages of Git work. But the one thing we have covered is looking at the differences between a local file versus repository and a staged file versus repository. Why is Git diff important? It is because let's just say you've made changes to a lot of files and let's just say you want to use the Git bash window to see the changes. An easy way to do that or Okay, easy might be subjective here, but one way of looking at the changes is to use git diff. Anyway, guys, that's it for this video. Until next time, ciao. Hi, guys, it's Glassboxed here, and I really appreciate you guys watching my video. And if you've liked it, then give it a thumbs up. If you already haven't, hit the subscribe button below to stay up to date with my latest video releases covering all aspects of technical testing. Also, follow me on Twitter and Google. Links in the description below. Until next time, ciao.